It's Moodle time. All right, welcome back to Moodle time. Um, this time we're going to take a look at assignments. Now, up to this point, we've just done things like I'll scroll down here. We've just done things uh, like resources, where it's links and and files and videos, and um, also we've looked at books and pages. But the next step here is uh, to look at assignments. And I'm assuming that if we are back to school and then there's another wave and people have to be gone for a couple weeks, um, or if students just decide not to go to school <laughs> but still want to have school uh, provided for them, then we're going to have to get into uh, assignments and probably quizzes or tests. Um, at the very least. So those are a couple things. I mentioned them before. Um, let's just go. I'm going to go to edit settings. Sorry. Didn't mean to do that one. I'm going to go to turn on editing. And what happens is uh, let's go down to ATW. Um, when we go to add activities, you'll notice that under activities and resources, uh, under activities, we have assignments, and so these are much more interactive pieces, and they're not all—they're not going to be super easy to build. Um, although, it just depends how complicated you want to make it. Um, but compared to the, the resources, all the activity stuff is more difficult, I would say, just in general. Some a lot more difficult, and some just a little bit difficult. So. This is the part where we go from the valley and we start to climb the mountain and see what Moodle can do. And I appreciate that at any point, even in the valley, if you're like, oh, I'm good. I don't want to start making assignments or I don't want to start doing quizzes on Moodle. Um, that's fine. It might be the best choice. Uh, I'm going to try to do everything here where we go to assignments um, and we're going to do, we're going to do quizzes. Um, and then we'll do lessons probably last and then then take a look at some other things like some of the games and different things but um, much more difficult in one way uh, but also more powerful so you have a lot more options so we're gonna go ahead and add an assignment so click on it you can read through all that if you like we'll add an assignment so the first thing it's gonna want is the assignment name and so I'm just gonna this is under ATW so I'm going to say, um, hmm, I don't know, um, smash, um, improving your smash. So I give it some kind of title. Um, and then in the description, that's where you're going to actually have all your instructions to uh, what the student needs to do. Um, and so this is where you can actually add a lot of things. You can add links, you can add videos, pictures, lots of things to make this actually look like an assignment that people want to do. Um, and so, again, you really, you can ask the students to do anything from like, um, from doing a text, like just responding in say 250 words like a, or, or a short essay or whatever kind of response to making a video to recording some audio and uploading that uh, to submitting a picture to um, you can actually give them the word document let's say for them to take and to insert the answers and then resubmit that back uh, it could be a pdf that they, you want them to print off and then they have to s submit it by scanning it it's a little little more a little more difficult to do um, but basically any kind of assignment you can think of um, for the most part you can do here so improving your smash uh, i'm going to say uh, take a video of your smash uh, 10 times and upload so I can make fun of you or something like that. Okay. Uh, and I could add, again, I can add pictures, I could add a recording, like, so I could actually give the instructions uh, by recording my voice, which would be, would save a lot of time for me typing, if that's what I chose to do, or I could up, up so, upload or insert pictures, 
just like um, just like before. So I'm gonna browse to have a good picture here. Yep, I do. Select this file. Don't need a description. Save image. Look at that. Just what a nice ATW symbol that is. Uh, you could display this on the description of the course page, or when they click on improving your smash, then this comes up. These instructions come up. Okay. Now, um, down here, you can actually, this is where you would upload. So if you say, um, for instance, in my physics class, a lot of times I have the questions, like a question sheet or a practice sheet that I want to just upload. Um, so let's say if it's in Word. So you can either just click on this um, and let's pretend this is the file. That's a syllabus, but let's just pretend it's the file of questions. So you can click on that Word document and um, again, select this file. And now that Word document is going to be uploaded. So the students will have the ability to um, access that file. And um, you could also, if you're doing Google documents or things like that, I would upload the link to them here. Um, so let's just, I'm going to link these words to, um, to, that would be, Actually, um, what am I doing here? <laughs> um, I could go to the, no, let's not do it that way. I, I wouldn't go browse. I'd just go to the, go to the Google doc and then input it there. So let me just show you, I guess, but I don't want to waste too much of your time here. So let's say, um, we have a Google docs here. Um, let's go to Moodle time course outline. Again, you're going to go to the share and you do this for anything. You can do this with PowerPoint or, or Google slide. I mean, um, and then you would, again, I've changed this so that anyone with a link, anyone with a link can do it, uh, and they can view it. Um, and I could set it to editor, but I, I don't want, I'm going to just have it view it and then they could make a copy of it. Um, so this copy of this link, control copy, control C to copy that. Um, uh, or you can just click on that and then done. And then when you come back to your assignment there, you can create a link and you can decide whether you want to open a new window or not. So now when they click on fun of you, then that's going to go to that, that Google doc which is a very confusing assignment already, I can tell, um, because I have random things linked all over, but just so you get a sense of what you can do. Um, okay, then let's go down to um, the next thing, and it's availability. The availability, now, just a dis disclaimer here, um, I have never had a class where I've assigned assignment and had students do them. So all the things I'm telling you right now is based off of videos I've watched, um, and what people have told me. So, um, and I, I'm actually going to link to some videos below here to, so that you can take a look yourself and I'll try to give you a good description of what those videos are about. So they don't waste too much time watching videos you don't want to watch. Um, so availability, you can, uh, you can set up when you want to allow the, um, students to start submitting. And I'm not sure why you'd want to do that really, other than if you don't want them to start doing ass assignments or too early, I don't know. Um, you can just click off uh, of enable, but by default, it sets it up for today for the today's date. Uh, then due date. That's an important one. So right now this is due on the 16th of June and um, uh, I guess midnight here, zero, zero. Um, and you can change that to um, whatever date you want. You can also take a due date away if you want to. Uh, and then cutoff date is a beauty. So if you're like, okay, you can submit it to the 19th, but then, or 16th, sorry, but then I'm feeling a little bad let's cut you. Let's give you a little slack. So you have a two, two day window, something like that. You can certainly do that. Or if you, um, would like to cut it off, right. You know, maybe you're like, you know, actually I meant that date. So 16th. So you cut it right off at the same time. Now let's see if I can click it. 
zero zero. Okay, so you could set that up. So the cutoff date. The cutoff date is when they can't submit anymore. Okay, so that, that option is now closed for them. So that's why if you're like, okay, we'll make the due date on the 16th and I'll give them a week to be slackers, you could do that if you wanted to. Or you could be really strict with them and say, nope. Uh, and then you have one here that says, remind me to, to grade by. So this is um, actually, it sends a message to you. And I'm not sure exactly if you get an email or if it's just some kind of notification that comes up. Um, just because I've never done this before, but it would let let you know that, okay, it's time for me to actually go in here and grade this stuff. And hopefully all the assignments are. If, if you have a cutoff date, then it's really nice because you can just do it right after the cutoff date and mark them. Or maybe you want it right after the next day after the due date and then just mark them, that kind of thing. Um, and you can disable all these things as well. So lots of, lots of uh, options here. Next thing is um, submission type. So here, this is an important one. If you want them, like for instance, if I if you give them a Word document or some kind of document where they have to fill out the answers on the, the sheet and then hand them back in, then you need to say file submission. Um, or if they have to create something, like say they have to create a Google slide and then submit that, or if they have to create a picture and submit that, or a, or a video, in this case, a video, or anything that's just not, straight up text you probably want file submissions uh, and you got some options now you can upload up to 20 files here which is ridiculous uh, hopefully you never have an assignment where they have to upload 20 files because there's no way you're going to get all those files in from all the students but anyway uh, or you can set it to one if you just need just a picture or just one video uh, maybe for this one because i've asked for 10 times maybe i i would say maximum is i want 10 10 videos. Even that, I, I really don't want 10 separate videos, but anyway. And then maximum submission size. Now, um, I haven't figured out how to make this larger. One megabyte is, um, that's like a 20 second video, something like that. It's not very long. Um, but at the same time, you don't want super long videos. Um, this would be a large document or um, like it all one megabytes good for most everything else um i'm not sure hmm, i can't remember the sizing of the of say uh google slide or something like that but oh, again google slide though that would be um they could submit a link to probably anyway i'm not sure how to change that that's what i'm trying to say it might say here uh, no, it doesn't say. Okay. Uh, and then accepted file types. Now, I would probably not change this ever, but uh, if you click on choose, you can see there's a lot of different file types, all file types, or just audio ones, or document ones, or HTML ones, or images, or presentation ones, spreadsheets, so and video files, web files. And then there's a whole bunch of other files that I wouldn't even bother touching unless you know what you're doing there. Um, in fact, all these I wouldn't necessarily limit them they're the typical like say if it's a video i might go video files because that's all the typical video files and so they wouldn't try to upload say an mp3 here because only mp4s are actual um, video files but i don't know it's a little bit i think you probably can just leave it at that unless you really are wanting to um, now the other thing is to submit online text this is really great for if you just have, say, a question up here. So here I'm asking them to submit videos. But if you, I said, um, tell me um, 10 ways to improve your smash, then maybe just online text would be great. Because then it's just a, a, um, a response they're going to type in. And they're going to be given a window kind of like this to type their response in. So that would be nice. Uh, you might want to consider the word limit. If you um, don't want long essays, you want just short stuff, maybe just put in the, you know, 250 words or uh, maybe just 50 words. Um, and you could put that as part of your assignment. You can say in 50 words or less, less tell me whatever you want to, to know about. Um, so I would suggest thinking about the word limit, just depending on your um, how you want things submitted. Um, but for now, I'm going to go file submissions. Oh, and here I can do both online text or file submissions. Um, so right now I'm going to do 
um, file submissions. And then feedback. Let's go to feedback type. So feedback here is pretty important as well. Uh, I think by default it always goes to the annotated PDF. What this does is it creates a PDF of whatever assignment they've um, submitted. So I'm not sure about for videos how the videos would be converted to PDF and maybe they don't. Maybe they aren't. I mean maybe because I don't think they would convert well. But for say a Word document that they're submitting the annotated uh, annotated PDF is a PDF that you can actually mark up. And so you basically are, you have one that's created for you and you can write on it and things like that. Um, so it's pretty cool. And um, the feedback comment, feedback comments, those are also good if you um, just have something general you want to say. Uh, and if, if you don't want to mark up whatever they do, you want to just have a, have comments. Um, you can have just a generic comment or you can have con comments in line with the actual text here. If you look here, it says, um, and if enabled, the submission text will be copied into the feedback comment field during grading, making it easier to comment in line. Um, so it just, it's just a nicer, more convenient way, I guess. If it's in line, it's, it's easier for the students to figure that out or to read your feedback. Um, and you could also have feedback files. So why would you ever use feedback files? This could be good for if you wanted to give feedback uh, verbally. You could actually have um, an audio file where you just tell them what's, you know, what you think of their work. So that kind of, that could be kind of cool. Uh, as long as you don't mind a recording of you being available for them. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that would be a, a terrible thing, but anyway, it's different comfort levels, I guess. And then offline grading worksheet. I'm not sure why you would necessarily use this, but the teacher will be able to download and upload a worksheet with student grades when marking the assignment. So that's if you wanted to, I, I think if you wanted to um, have a grading sheet that you actually are physically writing on and then upload that, then you'd use that. Uh, it kind of defeats the point of online stuff, but whatever, it's it's up to you. So uh, the annotate PDF is one that I'm quite interested in. And you can also, again, you can have multiple ones checked off here. Okay, and then submission settings. Um, so do you require the student to click the submission button? Um, if you don't require them, as soon as they upload their, say, their file or the videos in this case, it's going to, and they say upload, then it's going to automatically submit, which is fine, I guess. <laughs> um, but if you say yes, then it gives them a chance to upload something, and then uh, it's actually not submitted. It's a, a saved draft, and then they have to click to finally submit it to, to make it happen. Um, so that's up to you what how you want to decide to do that. Another one here required the students to uh, accept the submission statement. I think, I don't know if this is a default statement or if it's a statement you have to write up, but uh, when I've seen it used, it's, it's so that people can, uh, or so that students have to click on a thing saying, this is my own work. I didn't copy it from anyone online, that kind of thing. Um, so just set them up. So <laughs> if they actually did cheat, you can go back and be like, hey, you just lied to me. Anyway, I don't know if that's, if you're into doing that kind of thing, but that's what this is all about here. So, um, and maybe you can modify that submission statement. I, again, I'm not too sure. So, um, we'll put yes for both and then attempts reopen. So, um, never would mean that you can't, you can only attempt it once and then you're done. Um, if you want to give them multiple, uh, attempts, you can go manually and you can give them an infinite amount of attempts or between one and 30. And I think if you're giving someone 30 attempts, uh, I think you're, I think there's something wrong because if they haven't figured it out by 29 attempts, I'm not sure 30 is going to help them. But um, anyway, you can certainly give them multiple attempts. You can give them five attempts or three or whatever you want or two. Um, it's, it's totally up to you. And then um, automatically until pass is an interesting thing because um, that means that they keep, have to keep on submitting uh, until you say, yep, yeah, that's good enough. So it's almost like, um, 
submitting for a compl well not completion but you know what you know what I'm saying like if you want there's to be a certain standard that they reach so that's kind of cool as long as they reach it eventually I guess uh, okay then we'll go down to group submission settings um, again I don't know much about this other than it looks like you could have group work submitted here and you can say students submit in groups you can say yes or no it's up to you if you do say yes you can say require group to make submission um, or not um, and then whether you want everyone in that group to submit the assignment or not um, so that's up to you as well so um, the next thing is um, group grouping for um, student groups and I don't know anything about that so this I wouldn't probably play around with unless you're really getting into group submissions notifications notify graders about submissions um, so again this is something I wouldn't I don't know really much about whether you should notify them or not notify graders about late submissions uh, the graders that refers to you, the people that are marking it which is probably you unless you've uh, hired someone to, to grade all your work for you uh, or you have you're at, maybe at university it would make sense to have because people grade um, other th things for the prof but anyway um, I wouldn't worry about this default settings of notify students um, and I don't know what that's for exactly uh, anyway notifications next is grade so you can see with assignments there's tons of things you can do uh, okay this is an important one so do you want there to be no grade uh, which is I guess would be fine for an assignment um, just be whether they complete it or not I guess uh, or a scale grade and you can set the there's two things default competent competence scale or separate and connected ways of knowing I have no idea what these ones are like um, I, I'm thinking maybe in the future when we have to do like based on outcomes and we have competency levels then this would become useful perhaps uh, and the last one is point and that's that's the number system here so you can say maximum is 100 you can set it out of, to be out of whatever you want um, but I'll just leave it at 100 100 percent now the grading method you can have just simply at the end of it you say okay 90 out of 100 or 85 out of 100 that kind of thing um, and that'd be fine or you could have a marking guide now the marking guide is a little more complicated for the marking guide you can create categories so say if they're writing an essay you can have like a categories like uh, organization maybe and um, how how effective their idea gets across and whatever else you you know spelling maybe the way their paragraphs are structured I don't know you guys do whatever you do for English for the marking guide um, but it's 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 creating different categories okay so for this one for the videos of people smash I could grade them according to their speed their style you know di different things like that um, and give them uh, specific grades on that and then it'll be averaged or it would be calculated um, as a total grade out of 100 and uh, the next one is a rubric now the rubric um, hopefully you're familiar with rubrics but they basically say the different categories and then the different levels within them and so this is a nice one too for marking it's also quite easy because you just click on the one that they've achieved and uh, the level of the, their achievement and so um, they would get a again uh, certain points depending on how you made your rubric um, so there's a lot actually to show you there um, so we're going to just do simple grading for right now and then grade category category don't worry about that for now um, again that could be later on I think that if you set up grade categories um, then you could select which one grade to pass so again if if you set it up here that um, you need to pass in order to continue you could then set up okay well you need 50% to pass or 
whatever you decide, okay? Uh, blind marking. This is kind of an interesting thing. This is so that you don't see whose um, student, or, or sorry, which student it is that you're marking, so that there's, you know, a little less bias built into your own marking. Um, and so you can say yes or no. Depends on what you want to do. If you say no, then you'll be able to say see which student you're marking. And maybe for some things, you'd rather actually see that. Uh, and I, I know I like it for marking tests. I like not to know who it is. Um, but for assignments, especially if it's more like a formative feedback, it's it's good to know who it is. Um, higher hide greater what? Hide greater identity from students. Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to be me grading all your papers, so we won't hide that. But I guess if you had people grading, you might, different people, you could do that. Use marking workflow. Um, and I have no idea what that is. Uh, okay. Anyway, that's not something I'm going to use too much. Okay. Common module settings, so this is where kind of where you can show it and set ID numbers. Don't worry about that for right now. Re restrict access. Again, this is I'll make a video for a re restrict access uh, later on, but this is basically um, you know you can only hand in this assignment or get this assignment once you've done the previous reading or the previous whatever test. Um, so that's that's something, and I I honestly I'm not I'm a little bit split on whether this is going to be a useful thing for us to use in the, in the next in the fall with our current situation. But if it was completely online your course, then I think this would be really actually quite nice. Um, activity completion. So when they complete it, they can either you can have it the students mark it as complete or don't indicate it or show activity as completed when the conditions are met. And then you can set up those conditions, uh, whether it's based on they have to receive a certain grade, but then that requires you to mark it right away or students must submit this activity. So um, so instead of them just saying click, yeah, I'm done, they actually have to submit something here uh, before it's completed. And then required view, students must view this activity to complete it. Um, so yeah, if they don't view it, they don't click on it. I'm not sure how you could not view it and then still submit it, but maybe that's possible. I just don't know the student view. And then expected completion on. And so you could put this, uh, this would probably correspond to your due date, which, um, which is up here. So, oh doesn't automatically update to that that's unfortunate um so this is just today's date and you could put down oh, i expect you to be done on the 20th and it's due on the 23rd and then or it's due on the 16th okay let's change that to the i want you to be done on the 15th it's due on the 16th and i'm cutting you off on the 23rd something like that uh, okay and then tags again uh, i don't know too much about this this is probably keeping track of things I don't have any tags and competencies. Um, upon completing this, um, there's different things you can do here. I don't know much about this. Attaching evidence, send for review, complete the competency. competency. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to worry about those two things. So, the next thing you do is save and display. This has got to be my longest video here, but I'm telling you, there's a lot here. And there's even things I'm skipping over that are you could do okay so here you see a summary okay i have no students in this class um it's it's just a summary if there were students here i could see how many people have submitted it and um it lets me know like it's due in basically in six days three hours um and i could start grading the ones that needed to be graded and that would be a different view um but there's nothing to view there so let's go back here i just want to sh make you aware of one more thing here before end of this video and let's turn the editing off when you want to maybe uh, want, want to see how this assignment um, so this really should be up there actually let me turn editing on and this should really be up with the smash I'm gonna have it at the end of the smash and you can see that I need to move it over so I'm gonna move the right a couple times so it's lined up with that okay now turn editing off okay and there it is right there uh, you can actually see how the students will view it so go here switch roles to student and 
then when you go down here to improve your smash, this is what they see. So they see, again, improving your smash. Uh, the, the instructions, they have this link, they can click on that. That would again go to that Word document, uh, sorry, the Google Doc. Um, it shows this beautiful picture here. Uh, it has the attached Word document. Both of these are quite useless. Even this logo is a little useless, but whatever. It tells you uh, how many attempts you've done. It tells you all this kind of the stats on things, how much time is rem remaining. And you can click on Add Submission. And you can here then upload your file. So this is where the video that you've recorded of all your 10 smashes would be uploaded here. And remember I said that you can upload a maximum of 10 for one megabyte each. That should be enough to get all your 10 videos in. And you just upload them all here. And then you're going to click Save Changes. Um, and here's nothing submitted because, yeah, I didn't put anything in there. So I guess I have to say Cancel. So uh, that's it for assignments. There's a lot more we can talk about. Uh, I didn't talk about making a rubric or um, the other thing, the course or the um, one where you, oh, what's it called? Anyway, there's in the rubric thing, there's a couple of ways you can do it. One with just a mark, one with a rubric, and one where it gives um, different levels of, uh, of criteria. So all of that, you can watch these videos below here, and they that might help you all out a lot. Um, and in the future, I might talk more about that. 31 minutes. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. I've had a good time, though. There's a lot to know. <laughs> See you next time.